Welcome to Electric Evolution with Liz Allen. This podcast is about the journey to a more sustainable future in order for us to be able to do our bit to achieve net zero. I'll be discussing a variety of topics with experts in their field in order to educate and increase our knowledge of clean energy, electric vehicles and the electric vehicle infrastructure. So whether you're an individual wanting to make a difference at home, a small business or a corporate, this podcast is just for you. Okay, so today on the podcast, I am talking to Amanda Sims from Culture Dynamics, and it's going to be uh, covering a slightly different area with regards to sustainability and electrification today, because we're actually talking about developing the people that you work with to make sure that you're sustaining and developing a growing organisation. So thank you, Amanda, for joining me on Electric Evolution. I really appreciate it. We've known each other for a little while now. So if you can just um, give us a little bit of an introduction to you and sort of a bit about how we've met, et cetera. So, yeah, if you want to. Okay, super. Well, thank you for inviting me, Liz. I really appreciate it. Um, Well, I run, I'm I'm a freelance trainer, so I just run my own business um, delivering leadership training. That was my passion um, going back a number of years now. I have a background in the public sector, private sector, voluntary sector. and, And I think, you know, managing people, leading people was something I, I observed the good, the bad, the ugly. And um, when so I decided to to train um, and become a consultant in essentially leadership management, but also that grew into culture change management. I'm yeah, very passionate. Yeah, I did um, a postgrad course in systemic um, practice and very much have a um, a passion and an eye for the system. You know, with and of course, it's the system when we're looking at continuous improvement. Actually, you know, you you don't just tweak something there without understanding how it impacts, you know, the rest of the uh, the system. And uh, and I think, you know, when you're doing leadership training, you can walk into a, a, a team of people, uh, teach them anything they need to know, you know, better time management, setting clear goals, etc. But if the culture isn't um, conducive to them performing at their best, you know, that's yeah. that again requires some continuous improvement and so what I found is when I was engaging teams is we were actually looking at you know what works really well what doesn't work very well so there was this whole continuous improvement conversation from the very outset about the system the the environment the culture they worked in but also I my leadership training always starts with change starts with you so right from the beginning they were doing the same about themselves you know, what do I do well? What do I not do so well? What can I improve on? Um, and the two go hand in hand. And so that's where our journey first connected is looking at lean. You know, um, I can't quite recall now how I how I really ca- came across lean myself. Um, but uh, we invited you in to come and uh, put that piece of the jigsaw in place. And so yeah, all yeah. our team leaders did a lean program with you I sat in on those um sessions um I I somehow chickened out doing the uh the assessments didn't I but you you did that too (laughs) (laughs) I I participated um so that I could know um what they were learning and then when I did more training from a leadership um management point of view I could make sure that I held them to account on what you taught them uh, uh mm-hmm. to integrate it into their leadership so uh, so that was a really fascinating journey and I know you know the company that we worked with has gone from strength to strength and mm-hmm. and that's that's the key thing particularly you know for small um small businesses Uh, At the time, I think that company had about um, uh, 30, 35 staff Mm -hmm. and they're now approaching 100. You know, so the company over four years went um, because that was over a four year period. They got to that that level just Mm pre-COVID and uh, rapid growth creates all sorts of growing pains. And a lot of these team Mm -hmm. leaders have been put into positions, into those positions without any training whatsoever. Um, and having been engineers and technicians themselves, didn't necessarily understand what that role really entailed. Yeah, um, yeah. So, um, so they sucked it up, you know, and, and and they were willing participants. And it's been a great journey. And and, and that individual company, with your support, my support, um, 
has you know went on to get investors in people accreditation in 2016. Yeah, that makes yeah. a massive difference, doesn't it? So how how do you in, ensure that you're employing the right staff for your business? What, well, what do you need where, to do to make sure that you're actually employing the right people? Well, that's where it all starts, isn't it? So, you know, whether you're recruiting them at an entry level position or a team leader position or a management position, what I find sometimes is the job descriptions can be very, um, they might be clear, but are they really are they really clear about the what's important, you know, about not just what the job and the function is? Um, and, you know, you, you know, have you got this technical skill? Have you got this engineering skill? Have you got this qualification? But they don't always drill into what sort of personality do we want? Do we need a people focused yeah. person? Do we need someone who's got excellent attention to the detail? Do we need someone who's the ideas person? Mm -hmm. um, and if what's you the long term vision, I suppose. Exactly. And if you're not sure about that, you're not communicating that, you and you you do see a lot of people recruited into positions that they're not actually best suited to. Mm. Um, and, and often those individuals have fallen into a career path that they're ne not best suited to. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it just means that when, you know, they might come with a lot of experience on their CV, I've, you know, I've done this job for 20 years. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that they're the best person for the job. Exactly. And, and it that's... doesn't mean that they're also a leader, does it? it do, you know, because you've, you've got all these te this, these technical skills and abilities doesn't necessarily mean that you can lead people as you go up the ranks, does it? No. And this is the interesting thing. I, as part of what I do, I trained um, with uh, the Entrepreneurs Institute as a, um, a talent dynamics uh, consultant. So I do personality profiling using the talent dynamics tool so that people will probably be more familiar with things like DISC, um, Myers-Briggs, that those sorts Bell of Bell. tools. A bit of um, as well, yeah. um, but you've you've done you've done my talent dynamic I profile, have. haven't you? And I, have. uh, and I think you related very well to it and, and you did it absolutely. for your team. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's a very what I love about the model, um, just to give a very, you know, very, very short overview of it, is that it basically um, uh, I, it basically recognizes and all these tools are based on ancient Chinese philosophy um, going back about 5000 years. But it basically identifies that people lean in one of four directions. Either they are really creative people. They're the starters, you know, the people perhaps who are most entrepreneurial, like Richard Branson, Elon Musk, you know, they're, 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 they're the ideas people. They've always got another project to work on. Not very good at finishing anything, but very good at always starting a new project. Yeah. Yeah. You've then got the opposite to them, which are the people who are your great finishers, but they're not the one to come up with the ideas. Yeah. And they yeah. are your reliable people that you need, like customer service teams need to have this strong um, profile because they're the ones who are communicating, bringing everything together with reliability to deliver on time. Yes. Um, but they're generally not your ideas, people. Tell me what to no. do and I'll make it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you've got your people focused um, uh, personalities who just thrive being in conversation and being around people and being in teams. Mm -hmm. um, so salespeople often need that type of, of skill. And then opposite to them, you have your detail focused people. They're not so, they're, they're more introvert. They're less, you know, less extrovert. They're not so, uh, they don't flourish so much in the company of people. Their, their brains are wired to look at the detail. The analysts, the researchers, um, you know, the uh, people who who love to to work with numbers, and there's about eight profiles that sit around that model, and you can have a combination of all of that, but you will lean more to one than the other, and that determines the type of leader that you are. So if you need someone to be a leader of people, then having somebody whose brain's wired for the numbers more than the conversation might not give you the charisma and um and the energy that need people to need to be to be on you know to be motivated and um inspired um and in actual fact so i believe that everybody can be a leader but you need different types of leaders to perform different types of functions and, and even at different cycle times of the cycle of the business yeah. um mm -hmm. and unless you're really clear about what what it is that you need in a leader you just tend to promote people into positions and they just may not be 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's because it's the right time and maybe you haven't got the person that you need, but actually you need to need to promote somebody up. But it's not always the right time, is it? Might be the right time. It's not the right person for, for, for the for the goal that you want to achieve. And I think in my experience, quite often, that's another part, the missing part of the jigsaw is being really clear about what it is you want to achieve 12 months you know, two years, three years, five years down the line, that you're promoting this person into a role to to achieve that. Yeah. You know, do yeah. they actually? They may be excellent at what they did in their pre in their current role, but have they got the skills to achieve the goals that you're now setting them? Yeah. Um, and 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 often also as well, when people get promoted, they get take on responsibilities to do so many things: the sales side, the the accounting side, the the leadership vision side, um, and you know the the execution side. And they're actually not good at all of that. So exactly. they're and not playing the to their strengths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and th- and that's and that's really difficult, isn't it? Because actually probably the reason why they joined the company in the first place because they were actually going to try and you know they were happy doing something that they loved Mm -hmm. but you know obviously there are lots of people who want to develop themselves but actually once they develop themselves they stop being able to do that thing that they love so so then they start you know kind of um it's it's not not I don't mean a slippery slope but it's understanding how to develop those people because it doesn't mean that they can't do a management or a leadership role does it but what do you do to actually develop people effectively once they've got to that stage and there's a potential for them to be promoted how do you make sure that you develop them so that you can they can play to those maybe some new strengths what do you think Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And this is why, you know, leadership training, you know, develops those skills in profiling helps individuals to recognize um, where their challenges are, because so many people go through life feeling like they're failing Mm -hmm. without recognizing, well, actually, you're just being asked to do functions that don't play to your strengths. Yes. So if you're not being given the support or the training to compensate for that, yeah. So, for example, you could be a very people focused person. You've got um, um, a lot of uh, charisma, lots of personality. You're you're you just love being around people. Great in conversation. But sometimes you actually appear unreliable yeah. to yeah. to your teams because you talk the talk, but you don't always walk the walk. Yeah, right. Yeah, and yeah. Um, and. And you might that gets you really frustrated when people give you negative feedback if you if you seek out feedback because you think, well, but you know, I do all of this. But a lot of people, especially in certain industries, need to see reliability, need to see the detail. They do. Um, and so that's why you need to work, you know, be aware of that and work on that side of, of yourself. Um, or have people around you that support you in delivering those sorts of messages to your team so that get both the personality and the charisma and the leadership and the inspiration and the vision but they've also got you know your right hand person is actually delivering the communicating the detail and you know the progress and the data that people need it's that balance isn't it Mm. it's that balance between what they're really really good at and actually suppose it's a bit like a to me it's like a jigsaw puzzle isn't it you've got two thirds filled in maybe and then the other third is kind of like right okay what do we need to do to make sure that this person is able to be supported in in you know in in the leadership skills and everything that they need to deliver to their to their you know kind of to the company that they're working for and their teams yeah. um, and it's so, so, it's so key because it's not just the, the top people but it's that middle management as well because their direct reports are going to be grumbling if if they're seen to not be delivering what's expected yeah. and, it, and it goes right up to the top and and if you want sustainability you know you want to grow you want to manage the the rapid growth that your business might be going through then the more you can iron out those those issues, um, the more you're going to bring everybody with you on your journey. Because because these days you hear about, you know, kind of people um, disappearing. So the great resignation, you know, where where people have just had enough and they're kind of they're, they're sort of leaving companies in, in droves. But actually, it's if you're a growing company, you want to make sure that you're retaining these staff, because if they're good, 
why would you not want to retain them? So how do you do that? How, what do you do to develop them in order to retain them? Well, that's, as you say, you know, we've, we've talked about, you know, reflecting on one's own leadership and developing the skills and getting the, the appropriate support and training to to be what people expect you to be. And, you know, that's a, that's a huge ask. But a part of that is showing that you care about your people yes, um, and yes. you invest in your people because they are the asset that will deliver the results that you want. Mm-hmm. So if you you know, if you have the mindset that you pay someone to do a job so they should do the job, you, you whereas job security and pay is really important, particularly in the current climate mm-hmm. um, where, you know, where we're in an economic crisis, largely speaking, most people will leave their job either because of their boss um, yeah. or because they're not engaged, they haven't got challenging enough or interesting enough work, and they feel very undervalued and underappreciated. Mm-hmm. So, so this is where things like um, your your uh, onboarding process is so important. Um, having a training and development plan for individuals, you know, throughout their career, particularly in those early days, um, reward and recognition, and and that doesn't mean you have to have vouchers and certificates and ceremonies every week it just means you know sometimes a thank you at the end of the day I was just going to say sometimes it's just the little things isn't it it's just yeah. it's just that acknowledgement of people it doesn't take a lot you know it, it's a bit like if you think about the carrot and the stick actually you want to be giving the carrot more than the stick because that's what the carrot is what works isn't it just a tiny thing yeah absolutely and i've been doing a lot of the work i've i've been doing with companies um small to medium sized companies has been on their journey towards investors in people accreditation um mm-hmm. and so recognizing that framework which focuses on the quality of leadership um the continuous improvement journey and also how you support your individuals um that work for you the development conversation is a key aspect of this and and having a process by which you regularly have individual one-to-one conversations about the individual, how they're doing, where they see themselves in a year's time, you know, set them new and challenging goals so that they grow. And as they grow and take on those challenges and deliver on them, the business grows. Yeah. Um, so everything's always aligned to the business and the outcome of the business, but you bring those, you develop and bring those individuals with you on that journey. And so IIP call it the development conversation um, and anything you can do to, to develop that will keep people engaged. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's, and that's what it's all about. about. Exactly. That's what it's all about, isn't it? And I'm sure you and Liz, you know, Liz um, and, and myself in, in the course of our careers, there have been times when we've been really, you know, um, unhappy in our jobs. And if we look back, you know, was it pay or was it the way we were treated, the way we were managed? More, more often than not, it's that's how you feel at work than how much you get paid. I mean, I worked in the public sector, so pay... <laughs> couldn't really be a primary goal there um and uh it had to be about your teamwork your lead you know your managers your leaders and and, and such like and 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 feeling like you were making a difference yeah and and do you know what and i think that is a it, it's a big thing isn't it because nobody wants to go to, to work on a daily basis to do a bad job mm. no you know, exactly they all, everybody wants to feel like they're actually giving something back don't they you know but it is all about the companies that you work for and how the the, the how the companies deal with you and treat with you and what treat, treat you not treat with you uh, treat you and and the culture and everything so you know that it's it's kind of it's it's so important that yeah. companies recognize that people recognize what their company should be providing them and vice versa you exactly know? exactly and, and and i think one one word uh, that we do uh, word of caution that we do need to bring in is that particularly in the continuous improvement agenda is that you know investing in people you know investing in in you know asking for their ideas and introducing change is also in itself a very challenging thing and yeah, a scary thing so whilst so exactly so whilst we want to work with and grow our, our individuals in our business we want to have a continuous improvement culture we also have to recognize that people find change difficult um but again so. that conversation that support that helping people to see the journey that the business is is on um 
is is all part of 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 making sure that you've got the right people in the right positions um to 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 join you on that journey and and sometimes if 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 you've if you know if people don't want to be on that journey then they won't be but then yes. that's you know that's Absolutely. that's a choice that they can make i think it's about the the transparency of the business being honest about what they see needs improving and like you say bring everybody on board with you because actually if you if you don't bring people on board then that's when you get the resistance from from you know from for changes yeah. Because actually, if you've not talked to people, then they're going to just be, well, you just think, well, why should I why should I be involved in this? But then, like you say, people will will leave if they're if they're feeling unhappy. But this is about making sure that you're you're getting people to embrace change because, yes, it's not an overnight thing. But actually, to become more sustainable long term, it really needs embedding, doesn't it? And it just takes time and effort. And sometimes business as usual gets in the way and people just think, how am am I supposed to do this when I've got my daily job? Yeah. So, and, but you have to think, actually, it does take a bit of time, but it'll ben <clears throat> benefit you massively long term. Yeah. And I think that um, something you said there, like transparency, is again, sometimes, you know, we can set the vision, we can provide all the all the um, support and engagement with, with staff, um, but we forget to tell them how we're progressing or we give them too much information that's not relevant to them. You know, a lot of sort of financial data speak that doesn't really relate to their everyday experience. And and if I can sort of give a, just an analogy, I think here of, of, you know, let's say playing a game of football. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're if you can create a winnable game um, for your teams and your company to say, you know, this is the goal. You know, we want to win the premiership. Right. So you really set the clear vision. You know, you train your staff to do this, to do that, have the skills to to achieve that vision. Right. Yes. And, um, then, and you bring them into that vision as well by doing that, don't you? Yeah, exactly. And what motivates them along the way? Because that might be a five year plan, three year plan. What motivates people to keep putting the effort in when they're on the pitch is knowing what the score is. Yeah. Right. If you if you play a game of football and you don't know you've lost count how many goals you've scored, right? You probably sort of like lose a bit of you know interest in keeping the effort going. So it's really important that people have clear and measurable goals on this continuous improvement that they're doing to achieve the end goal, and that they know whether they're winning or losing. Which is why um, you know the uh, making it making everyone feel they're part of a winnable game makes it achievable, makes it exciting, it motivates them, it engages them, and they're far less likely to go off somewhere else. Yeah, very true. So I just wanted to wrap this up and just just ask you, so how how would you be able to help people and how can they contact you if you're if they, you know, to get your help? Can you just give me some details? Yeah, well, uh, um, probably the best way is to um, email me. Um, which is just amanda at culturedynamics.co.uk. Um, you know, let me know, you know, what resonated with you from listening to this podcast today. And we just have a conversation about, you know, what aspect of, of change or um, training uh, is, is something that's going to help you on your journey to achieve your company's goals. Or perhaps you're not even quite sure yet what those goals are. And you just, you know, that would be a first step is to really let, let's be clear about what those goals are and what the strategic strategic objectives are to get there. Because a lot of senior leadership teams also haven't quite articulated that. It's in their heads. Yeah. But getting it onto paper in a very simple um, format that you can communicate clearly and get everybody on board is much tougher than um, than than you would think. So uh, anything from creating the vision to training the people to achieving an investors in people uh, or other type of um, uh, rec recognition or accreditation um, that recognises you know your leadership your staff and your continuous improvement agenda then I'd, I'd be more than happy to to help out and of course we'd probably collaborate on that wouldn't we liz to we would, um, definitely to definitely. to bring to bring value absolutely well listen thank you thank you for joining me like i say it's always a pleasure to talk to you so i'm sure i'll get you back on here again but thank you and yeah i'll see i'll see you soon 
Thank All the you. very best. Thank you. Bye. 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 You've been watching Electric Evolution with Liz Allen. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon and you'll receive all of our weekly videos. Thanks for watching. See you soon.